पेज नंबर 102 लेसन 8 मिजबिल द ऑटर दिस इज अ चैप्टर रिटन बाय गेविन मैक्सवेल बिफोर यू रीड गेविन मैक्सवेल लिव्स इन अ कॉटेज इन कैमसफियरना इन द वेस्ट हाइलैंड्स इन स्कॉटलैंड व्हेन हिज डॉग जॉनी डाइड Maxwell was too sad to think of keeping a dog again but life without a pet was lonely read what happened then in maxwell's own words activity number 1 do you have a pet if you do you perhaps know that a pet is a serious responsibility read in the box which is given hereafter what the spca the society for the prevention of cruelty to animals has to say about how to care for a pet owning a pet is a lifetime of commitment up to 10 years or more if you own a dog or a cat involving considerable responsibility the decision to acquire one therefore should be made by the whole family without full agreement by everyone the pet could end up unwanted puppies and kittens are so adorable it is easy to understand why adults and children alike would be attracted to them unfortunately their cute looks are often a disadvantage because people purchase them without consideration and the knowledge on how to take proper care of them The basic points you should keep in mind before adopting a puppy are number 1 an annual dog license in accordance with government regulations number 2 its annual vaccination against major diseases number 3 toilet training number 4 regular grooming and bathing number 5 obedience training number 6 don't forget you should feed your pet a balanced diet number 7 socialization is very important because many dogs are kept confined in cages or tied up to stop them from dirtying the garden or from chewing on shoes this is wrong number 8 a daily dose of exercise affection and play page number 103 Reading up on the subject beforehand is another important requirement and will guide you towards being a responsible pet owner. Selected pet shops and major bookstores provide books on the care of various breeds and pets. Number 2. Imagine someone has gifted you a pet. With your partner's help, make a list of the things you need to know about the pet. in order to take good care of it one has been done for you number 1 which is done for you the food it eats number 2 number 3 number 4 and number 5 are given with blank spaces for your answer number 3 otters are found in large numbers in the marshes that is wet areas near lakes rivers or seas near basra a town in iraq imagine you wanted to bring an otter from iraq to london as a pet what special arrangements would you need to make for your pet otter you would need to find a place with lots of water for example what other points should you think about the information about iraq and london are given here under which may help you iraq iraq has mostly broad plains and marshes along the iranian border in the south with large flooded areas a large part of iraq's land area is desert so it has cool winters and dry hot and cloudless summers the mountain areas near iran and turkey have cold winters There is heavy snowfall there and 
when the snow melts in spring it causes floods in central and southern iraq now london london has a large population and is a very busy city in addition to multi-storied buildings however it has many open spaces or parks it has a temperate climate that is it is neither very hot nor very cold with regular but generally light rainfall or snow throughout the year the warmest month is july and the coolest month is january february is the driest month snow is not very common in london page number 104 part 1 Early in the new year of 1956 I traveled to southern Iraq by then it had crossed my mind that I should like to keep an otter instead of a dog and that chemosphere ringed by water a stone's throw from its door would be an eminently suitable spot for this experiment when i casually mentioned this to a friend he as casually replied that i had better get one in the tigris marshes for there they were as common as mosquitoes and were often tamed by the arabs we were going to basra to the consulate general to collect and answer our mail from europe at the consulate general we found that my friend's mail had arrived but that mine had not i cabled to england and when 3 days later nothing had happened i tried to telephone the call had to be booked 24 hours in advance on the first day the line was out of order on the second the exchange was closed for a religious holiday on the third day there was another breakdown my friend left and i arranged to meet him in a week's time 5 days later my mail arrived I carried it to my bedroom to read and there squatting on the floor were two arabs beside them lay a sack that squirmed from time to time they handed me a note from my friend here is your otter part 1 glossary crossed my mind means a thought came into my mind a stone's throw means a very short distance cabled means sent a message by telegraph squirmed means twisted about now part 2 on the same page with the opening of that sack began a phase of my life that has not yet ended and may for all i know it is in effect a thraldom to otters an otter fixation that i have since found to be shared by most other people who have ever owned one the creature that emerged from the sack onto the spacious tiled floor of the consulate bedroom resembled most of all a very small medievally conceived dragon page number 105 from the head to the tip of the tail he was coated with symmetrical pointed scales of mud armor between whose tips was visible a soft velvet fur like that of a chocolate brown mole he shook himself and i half expected a cloud of dust but in fact it was not for another month that i managed to remove the last of the mud and see the otter as it were in his true colors mejbil as i called the otter was in fact of a race previously unknown to science and was at length christened by zoologists lutrogale persipicillata maxwelli or maxwell's otter For the first 24 hours Mitchbill was neither hostile nor friendly he was simply aloof and indifferent choosing to sleep on the floor 
as far from my bed as possible. The second night Mijbil came on to my bed in the small hours and remained asleep in the crook of my knees until the servant brought tea in the morning and during the day he began to lose his apathy and take a keen, much too keen interest in his surroundings. I made a body belt for him and took him on a lead to the bathroom where for half an hour he went wild with joy in the water, plunging and rolling in it, shooting up and down the length of the bathtub underwater and making enough slosh and splash for a hippo. This, I was to learn, is a characteristic of waters. Every drop of water must be, so to speak, extended and spread about the place. A bowl must at once be overturned, or if it will not be overturned, be set in and splashed in until it overflows. Water must be kept on the move and made to do things. When static, it is wasted and provoking. Now the glossary for the second part, page number 104. Thraldom, it is an old-fashioned use. It means being under the control of. Fixation means a very strong attachment or feeling. Medievally conceived means an imagination of the Middle Ages. Page number 105. Christened means named. Hostile means unfriendly. Aloof and indifferent means keeping a distance. Apathy means absence of interest. So to speak means as it were one could say this. Provoking causing anger or some other reaction. Page number 106 Two days later, Mijbil escaped from my bedroom as I entered it and I turned to see his tail disappearing round the bend of the corridor that led to the bathroom. By the time I got there, he was up on the end of the bathtub and fumbling at the chromium taps with his paws. I watched, amazed. In less than a minute, he had turned the tap far enough to produce a trickle of water and after a moment or two achieved the full flow. He had been lucky to turn the tap the right way. On later occasions, he would sometimes screw it up still tighter, chittering with irritation and disappointment at the tap's failure to cooperate. Very soon, Midge would follow me without a lead and come to me when I called his name. He spent most of his time in play. He spent hours shuffling a rubber ball around the room like a four-footed soccer player using all four feet to dribble the ball. And he could also throw it with a powerful flick of the neck to a surprising height and distance. But the real play of an otter is when he lies on his back and juggles with small objects between his paws. Marbles were Mitt's favourite toys for this pastime. He would lie on his back, rolling two or more of them up and down his wide, flat belly without ever dropping one to the floor. Glossary Fumbling means trying to do something in a clumsy manner. Flick means a quick light movement. Oral comprehension check. Number one. What experiment did Maxwell think Chemosphere would be suitable for? Number two. Why does he go to Basra? How long does he wait there and why? Number three. How does he get the otter? Does he like it? Pick out the words that tell you this. Number four. Why was the otter named Maxwell's otter? Number five. Take the right answer. In the beginning, the otter was 
aloof and indifferent, friendly or hostile. Number six. What happened when Maxwell took Midgebill to the bathroom? What did it do two days after that? Page number 107. Part 3. The days passed peacefully at Basra, but I dreaded the prospect of transporting Midge to England and to Kamasfirna. The British airline to London would not fly animals, so I booked a flight to Paris on another airline and from there to London. The airline insisted that Midge should be packed into a box not more than 18 inches square to be carried on the floor at my feet. I had a box made and an hour before we started I put Midge into the box so that he would become accustomed to it and left for a hurried meal. When I returned there was an appalling spectacle. There was complete silence from the box but from its air holes and chinks around the lid blood had trickled and dried. I whipped off the lock and tore open the lid and Midge, exhausted and blood spattered, whimpered and caught at my leg. He had torn the lining of the box to shreds when I removed the last of it so that there were no cutting edges left. It was just ten minutes until the time of the flight and the airport was five miles distant. I put the miserable Midge back into the box, holding down the lid with my hand. I sat in the back of the car with the box beside me as the driver tore through the streets of Basra like a ricocheting bullet. The aircraft was waiting to take off. I was rushed through to it by infuriated officials. Luckily, the seat booked for me was at the extreme front. I covered the floor around my feet with newspapers, rang for the air hostess and gave her a parcel of fish for Midge to keep in a cool place. I took her into my confidence about the events of the last half hour. I have retained the most profound admiration for that air hostess. She was the very queen of her kind. She suggested that I might prefer to have my pet on my knee, and I could have kissed her hand in the depth of my gratitude. But not knowing otters, I was quite unprepared for what followed. Now the glossary for this part of the lesson. Dreaded the prospect means was in great fear of something that would happen in the future. An appalling spectacle means a shocking scene. Whipped off means quickly took off. Ricocheting bullet, a bullet which changes direction after hitting a surface. Infuriated means very angry. Took her into my confidence. Here, shared with her my experiences or secrets. Page 108 Now the lesson rolls on. Midge was out of the box in a flash. He disappeared at high speed down the aircraft. There were squawks and shrieks, and a woman stood up on her seat, screaming out, A rat! A rat! I caught sight of Midge's tail disappearing beneath the legs of a portly white turbaned Indian. Diving for it, I missed, but found my face covered with curry. Perhaps, said the air hostess with a most charming smile. It would be better if you resumed your seat and I'll find the animal and bring it to you. I returned to my seat. I was craning my neck trying to follow the hunt when suddenly I heard from my feet a distressed chitter of recognition and welcome. And Midge bounded onto my knee and began to nuzzle my face and my neck. Now the glossary for page number 108. Portly means stout. 
bounded onto means climbed up quickly nuzzle means to rub gently with the nose oral comprehension check number 1 how was midge to be transported to england number 2 what did midge do to the box page number 109 number 3 why did maxwell put the otter back in the box how do you think he felt when he did this number 4 why does maxwell say the a hostess was the very queen of her kind number 5 what happened when the box was opened part 4 After an even full journey Maxwell and his otter reach London where he has a flat Midge and I remained in London for nearly a month He would play for hours with a selection of toys ping pong balls marbles rubber fruit and a terrapin shell that I had brought back from his native marshes With the ping pong ball he invented a game of his own which could keep him engrossed for up to half an hour at a time a suitcase that i had taken to iraq had become damaged on the journey home so that the lid when closed remained at a slope from one end to the other midge discovered that if he placed the ball on the high end it would run down the length of the suitcase he would dash around to the other end to ambush its arrival hide from it crouching to spring up and take it by surprise grab it and trot off with it to the high end once more outside the house i exercised him on a lead precisely as if he had been a dog midge quickly developed certain compulsive habits on these walks in the london streets like the rituals of children who on their way to and from school must place their feet squarely on the center of each paving block must touch every seventh upright of the iron railings or pass to the outside of every second lamp post opposite to my flat was a single storied primary school along whose frontage ran a low wall some 2 feet high on his way home but never on his way out midge would tug me to this wall jump onto it and gallop the full length of its 30 yards to the hopeless distraction both of pupils and of staff within now the glossary terrapin shell means the shell of small turtle found in north america engrossed means completely interested in ambush means to attack suddenly from a hidden position compulsive habits means habits impossible to control upright here means post or rod placed straight up distraction means something that takes away one's attention from what one is doing page number 110 It is not I suppose in any way strange that the average Londoner should not recognize an otter but the variety of guesses as to what kind of animal this might be came as a surprise to me Otters belong to a comparatively small group of animals called mustelins shared by the badger mongoose weasel stoat mink and others I faced a continuous barrage of conjectural questions that sprayed all the mustelins but the otter more random cases hit on a baby seal and a squirrel is that a walrus mister reduced me to giggles and outside the dog and outside the dog show i heard a hippo a beaver a bear cub a leopard one apparently that had changed its spots and a brontosaur midge was anything but an otter but the question for which i awarded the highest score came from a laborer digging a hole in the street 
I was still far from him when he laid down his tool, put his hands on his hips, and began to stare. As I drew nearer, I saw his expression of surprise and affront, as though he would have me know that he was not one upon whom to play jokes. I came abreast of him. He spat, glared, and then growled out, Here, mister, what is that supposed to be? Now the glossary on this page, page number 1 and 10. Barrage of conjectural questions. Here means a stream of questions filled with guesses. Oral comprehension check. Number 1. What game had Mitch invented? Number 2. What are compulsive habits? What does Maxwell say are the compulsive habits of? Number 1. School children. And number two, midge. Number three, what group of animals do otters belong to? Number four, what guesses did the Londoners make about what midge was? Thinking about the text. Number one, what things does midge do which tell you that he is an intelligent, friendly and fun-loving animal who needs love? Number two, what are some of the things we come to know about otters from this text? Number three, why is Mid's species now known to the world as Maxwell's otter? Page number 111. Number four, Maxwell in the story speaks for the otter Midge. He tells us what the otter feels and thinks on different occasions. Given as follows, are some things the author does. Complete the column on the right to say what Maxwell says about what Mid feels and thinks. What Midge does. Plunges, rolls, in the water. Column 1. What Midge does. Plunges, rolls in the water and makes the water splosh and splash. Screws the tap in the wrong way. Nuzzles Maxwell's face and neck in the aeroplane. Now for each of these, you have to write how Mitch feels or thinks. In the blank spaces given in front of each description about what Mitch does. Number 5. Read the story and find the sentences where Maxwell describes his pet otter. Then choose and arrange your sentences to illustrate those statements that follow that you think are true. Maxwell's description, number one, makes Midge seem almost human, like a small boy. Number two, shows that he is often irritated with what Midge does. Number three, shows that he is often surprised by what Midge does. Number four, of Midge's antics is comical. Number five, shows that he observes the antics of Midge very carefully. Number six, shows that he thinks Midge is a very ordinary otter. Number seven, shows that he thinks the otter is very unusual. Number seven, shows that he thinks the otter is very unusual. Thinking about language. Number one, describing a repeated action in the past. To talk about something that happened regularly in the past but does not happen any longer, we use would or used to. Both would and used to can describe repeated actions in the past. A. Midge would follow me without a lead and come to me when I called his name. B. He would play for hours with a selection of toys. C. On his way home, Midge would tug me to this wall. D. When I was five years old, I used to follow my brother all over the place. E. He used to tease me when mother was not around. 
to describe repeated states or situations in the past however we use only used to page number 112 so we do not use would with verbs like be have believe etc look at the following sentences a when we were young we used to believe there were ghosts in school note believe shows a state of mind b 30 years ago more women used to be housewives than now note b here describes a situation from the table which follows make as many correct sentences as you can using would and or used to as appropriate now the hint is first decide whether the words in italics show an action or a state of or a state or situation in the past hint first decide whether the words in italics show an action or a state or situation in the past then add two or three sentences of your own to it emperor akbar every evening we 50 years ago very few people till the 1980s shanghai my uncle these are to be joined with the next parts of these sentences with would or used to and the parts of these sentences are be fond of musical evenings take long walks on the beach own cars have very dirty streets spend his holidays by the sea part 2 noun modifiers to describe or give more information about a noun or to modify a noun we use adjectives or adjectival phrases look at these examples from the text a an eminently suitable spot b his wide flat belly c symmetrical pointed scales d a ricocheting bullet nouns can also be used as modifiers a the dinner party b a designer dress c the car keys we can use more than one noun as modifier proper nouns can also be used a the christmas dinner party b a silk designer dress c the maruti car keys in the examples which are given hereafter there is an adjectival phrase in front of a noun modifier a the lovely christmas party b a trendy silk designer dress c the frightfully expensive golden maruti car keys number 1 look at these examples from the text and say whether the modifiers in italics are nouns proper nouns or adjective plus noun number 1 an auto fixation number 2 the iron railings number 3 the tigris marshes number 4 the london streets number 5 soft velvet fur number 6 a four footed soccer player page number 113 number 2 given here after are some nouns and a set of modifiers in the box combine the nouns and modifiers to make as many appropriate phrases as you can hint the nouns and the modifiers are all from the texts in the book temple person gifts time crossing physique three girls thoughts scream subject flight coffee triangle boys farewell landscape chatterbox view dresses roar expression 
handkerchief, profession, celebration. College, love, bear, plump, incorrigible, rough, uncomfortable, railroad, invigorating, ridiculous, hundred, white, tremendous, panoramic, loud, stone, slang, family, heartbreaking, first, ordinary, slack, marriage, birthday. Third, read this sentence. He shook himself and I half expected a cloud of dust. The author uses a cloud of dust to give a picture of a large quantity of dust. Phrases like this indicate a particular quantity of something that is not usually countable. For example, a bit of land, a drop of blood, a pinch of salt, a piece of paper. Number one, match the words on the left with a word on the right. Some words on the left can go with more than one word on the right. Now the words on the left. Number one, a portion of. Number two, a pool of. Number three, flakes of. Number four, a huge heap of. Number five, a gust of. Number six, little drops of. Number seven, a piece of. Number eight, a pot of. The words on the right are blood, cotton, stones, gold, fried fish, snow, water and wind. Number two, use a bit of, a piece of, a bunch of, a cloud of, a lump of, with the italicized nouns in the following sentences. The first has been done for you as an example. Number one, my teacher gave me some advice. Here, the words some advice are in italics. And the answer is, my teacher gave me a bit of advice. Likewise, you have to give the answer for the next sentences. The sentence here at number two is, Can you give me some clay, please? And there is a blank space for your answer. Page number 114. Number three. The information you gave was very useful. Here also there is a space for your answer. Number four. Because of these factories, smoke hangs over the city. There is a space for your answer. Number five. Two stones rubbed together can produce sparks of fire. And here is a blank space for your answer. Number six. He gave me some flowers on my birthday. A space for your answer. Speaking, you have seen how Maxwell describes Midge, the author's feelings and thoughts by watching him. Play the game of dumb charades. Take turns to express a feeling or thought silently through gestures. Let the class speak out their guesses about the feelings or thoughts you are trying to express. Writing Write a description of a person or an animal, such as a pet, that you know very well and love very much. Questions 4 and 5 in thinking about the text will have given you some idea about how to do this. Mention some things the person or animal does what do you think the person or animal feels, etc. In this lesson, what we have done. Narrated a story about an interesting and unusual pet. What you can do. Number one, the events narrated in this text took place over half a century ago. Discuss with your class what changes have taken place over these years in. Number one, what animals we can keep as pets. Some species are protected under the laws for wildlife preservation. Number two, the laws for exporting and importing or trading in animals. Number three, rules for transporting goods, pets, etc. on aircraft.
The class might wish to do their own research on these questions and report their findings in class. Number two, ask students if they know of other examples of unusual pets or of wild animals which are trained to work for or amuse humans, for example, dancing bears, lions and tigers in a circus, elephants trained to work or take part in ceremonies. Then lead students into a discussion about the ethics of keeping wild animals as pets. What are the difficulties these may entail? According to the students, what will the animals miss most when it is taken away from its natural habitat? Do they think that it is cute to see Midge, the otter, on a leash? Get them to look at the situation from all points of view. Number three, visit the website www.org.uk slash core slash wildlife to know more about otters and otter conservation projects. Page number 115. A poem titled Fog. The fog comes on little cat feet. It sits looking over harbour and city on silent haunches and then moves on. The poet is Carl Sandberg. Glossary On haunches means sitting with knees bent. Thinking about the poem. Number 1. Part 1. What does Sandberg think the fog is like? Number two, how does the fog come? Number three, what does it in the third line refer to? Number four, does the poet actually say that the fog is like a cat? Find three things that tell us that the fog is like a cat. Number two, you know, that a metaphor compares two things by transferring a feature of one thing to the other. See Unit 1. Now part 1 of this question. Find metaphors for the following words and complete the table which is given hereafter. Also try to say how they are alike. The first is done for you. The first one is storm, tiger, pounces over the fields or growls. Now comes the train, then fire, then school and then home. You have to fill in the gaps with appropriate answers. Number 2. Part 2. Think about a storm. Try to visualize the force of the storm Hear the sound of the storm, feel the power of the storm and the sudden calm that happens afterwards. Write a poem about the storm, comparing it with an animal. Number 3. Does this poem have a rhyme scheme? Poetry that does not have an obvious rhythm or rhyme is called free verse. 